All right, how are we all doing today? Great. Okay, so if you're unaware, my talk is about making your community and event more awesome, similar to what the slide said. If you have not met me yet, my name is Philip Blue, I'm Ubuntu community member, uh, recent author, co-author, joint author of one of the new Ubuntu guides, and an all-around cool person, or so they tell me. So my talk will be going over some of the ways that people run into issues when they're building their community and some of the ways that we can design to make the groups of, pe groups of users that we have more efficient and overall allow them to see the things that make them tick and the problems that we run into when they tick. Now, you might say, why community? Why do we need this? Well, people have been joining together for thousands of years to do things overall similar to this. And I feel like the more often times we're able to gather together, whether it be in an online format such as IRC or whatever format your community uses, or a physical event like this, I feel that new ideas can come out of it. I mean, how often have you been struggling with something and then you come up to a place like this and you find yourself, that clicked, finally I can solve the issue that I've been working on. I think that one of the ways that we can figure out and make our lives better in whatever we do with our lives is community. Now, let's imagine a scenario here. Let's say you're running a local meetup or a local event with you and three friends, could be two, could be four, relevant. You decide you want to increase the group, but you're, unher you're unsure how. Well, the main thing I would say is stop doing what you're doing. Whatever you're doing, if it's not increasing, is probably not working well, and you need to reevaluate what you're working on. Because if you continue doing the exact same things that you're going to do, your community is not going to grow, your community is not going to expand. However, what we want to do, we want to get new people into the community. However, you can't just simply say, I want to grow my community. People have been trying to grow groups that they're interested in for years. Before computers were around, before anything, people have been trying to grow m various number of instances and communities such as this. However, I think that oftentimes when people actually want to grow their community, they don't actually think of proper practical ways to do this. And to an outsider who you're trying to grow your community to, I think it's important to understand that growing your community equals selling your community. Selling your community means that you have to market your community in many ways as a product. Because therefore, you want, them to, you want to tell the people why what they're doing matters. Because in today's, today's life, today's world, there's thousands of things that people can do with their time. People rarely have free time to do what they want to do. Your, the ability for someone to say, wow, I have free time is a luxury in the world today that I don't think many of us can say that we have. That being said, you need to be able to tell them why what they're going to do matters and why what it's going to do is not only make the world better, make them feel good at the same time. <laughs> that being said, it's very important that you for it treat your organization and your community, your community as an organization and as a living, vibrant, breathing thing. Because too many people will treat their group of community as just a collective group of users, but you need to treat them as one entire working, vibrant product. Not product in the sense that we think of monetary product, but product in the sense of something that's accomplishing something. And then you might say, okay, well, I want to start up my community again and make my community function. Now, obviously, I would say you need to start your community online as you should. Start as simple as possible. Too many people, when they want to grow their community, they have these vibrant ideas. They think, well, I'm going to go out and I'm going to do this giant event. I'm going to do this giant scheme online. And sure, that's good, but you've got to build your way up to those things. You don't want to come up and you don't want to tell the people, well, this is what we're going to do, and realize that you don't have the manpower, the funds, or the ability to accomplish all of this. 
I mean, I think that oftentimes too big can equal problematic. Sure, these events are nice like this, but we don't need every single community to be running one. That's impractical. I mean, I've run Ubuntu meetups before in my backyard at a barbecue. Bit, go to a Starbucks and sit down and have people show up for a couple hours, and that's just the same as meeting up with 30 or 40 people at a centralized location in many ways. That being said, if you are interested in Ubuntu, there's several events that you can join up to start running. You can start running things such as Ubuntu hours, which are simple introductions where you and your friends meet up, gather together, talk about coffee and complain about Ubuntu or talk about your things that you enjoy about it. Also coming up, we have Ubuntu Global Jams, which are nice. If you are interested, find one in your area and we're going to do some bug triaging and bug documentation because bugs are always a problem for every piece of software, unfortunately. <laughs> now, one thing that I like about an event is events are a top marketing tool. In order for your event to succeed, you have to understand that you need to be able to market your event, to be able to showcase your event to the people around you who might be interested in coming to it. Because therefore, the more people you get to an event, the more people you have as your users and your developers later on. So for instance, your, your future attending, your future event attendee could be one of your core contributors two years down the road which could make your life easier if you're not constantly doing as much work. Now obviously an event is one of the easiest ways to grow a community, but also it can be a chance, it can be to meet more people who might be similar to you. Like I said previously, we want community as a way to be able to grow and to be able to expand what we do. And therefore, the more people we can do that with, the more chance we can build the product that we're making or the project that we're working on to be a greater level. The more people you typically have involved in your project, typically the better it will be because it, will, it creates a more diversified user force and the ability to gather around and meet more people. Now, say you need to actually work on this and you realize, okay, I'm gonna be running my event. I'm gonna be running my group. Beautiful. Now, many people get this, but then they realize that they don't actually have the prop, they don't actually have the setup or they don't have the ability to run what they need to run. So I think it's important to have discussion topics already in mind when your users sit down. Keep inclusion in mind. Understand that you're gonna have different people come to your group. They might not be have the technical skills that you do, or they might have more technical skills than you do, but try and figure out a way to relate to them the best that you can. Now definitely the day that you're gonna be running this meeting, one thing you have to do, you have to prepare for things to go wrong. Obviously, you may have kept the things in mind, you may have found people who can show up to help you out, but understand, no matter what you do with your community event, something might not go right. Something you might show up and you're like, crap, forgot this, didn't do this. Always plan for that. That being said, no matter what you can do, something bad will happen. And one of the things that I like to always understand will happen is that in any community, whether this be online, whether this be in person, whether it be at the bottom of the sea, there will always be an asshole. <laughs> it's a sad fact, it's a sad fact. I'm sure everybody here can come up with countless stories. We could spend the next five hours talking about every person who's ever caused problems in communities that we're a part of. However, there's really nothing that we can do to prevent that, I think. 
However, I've no there's a book that I read a couple years ago that really addressed this concern. So I'm going to point it out to you guys. Coping with Difficult People. Read this maybe two years ago. It addresses the se seven problems, I think, of difficult. The several types of people. Write down that title if you want, or do whatever it is you do with your lives. <laughs> now, once I was part of this community, non-technical community, as a club of some sort. However, my asshole story, if you will. There was a man who was in charge of this club, book club, I think. Let's, let's call it a book club. There's actually a science fiction book club. Shows how much fun I am in my spare time. Now, the man was running the science fiction book club. And for some reason or other, he got another job, got other commitments, and the science fiction book club started to not function as well. However, that being said, he struggled to continue to function with the club running. And so me and the other five members of the book club come up to him and we say, sir, we understand that you're struggling with this. Let us help you to create a situation which can allow this club to continue to run and allow our community to function. And being the asshole that he is, he turns to us and says, if no one can be in charge of this group, if I can't be in charge of this group, no one can be in charge of this group. And so we all left the group, and the group died. And so if there, when nobody shows up, the club that you, and the community that you spend so hard working on isn't going to function in that way. That being said, what to do when you run your event when nobody shows up? Now, what I always like to say is they don't dislike your event. They just don't know about it. I used to run in a bunch of meetup in San Diego, where I'm from, in California. Now, for the first three or four times I ran the meetup, no one showed up. So does that mean that as soon as nobody shows up, you say, I give up? No, you don't give up. You find ways to continue. You find things that you're doing wrong, and you move on from them. That involves marketing your event. Now, when you go to market your event, you have to understand the type of people who come are the type of people that you advertise to. And if you want to reach a wider audience, you have to learn how to advertise to different people. Now, when I say that, one thing that I advertise invest strongly in, don't just use your distro's event tools. Don't just use your community event tools. Many software, many soft orchestra software, many distros provide tools for you to use to work to advertise your event. However, you need to go on to unconventional methods. So there was this one time, for instance, that I was running a meetup in San Diego when probably getting about 10 people showing up every other week for the event. However, I decided to myself, let's try and get more people. And so I started advertising the event on Reddit. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Reddit, but if you are, some of you probably hate me for saying that right now. <laughs> but so I advertised it on Reddit. And then all of a sudden, at the Starbucks two weeks later, 27 people show up. H however, it wasn't the target audience I was usually intending to show up to my bunch of meetups. There was one person who ever, relating back to um, don't be an asshole, came just for the meetup, not to talk about Ubuntu, but to warn all Ubuntu users how Google was creating jails to imprison people. And he would not stop talking for about 30 minutes of that. That was, that was fun. He left the group. <laughs> now, what's important with this is that in order for you to actually understand what's going on in a community, you actually have to understand communication as a self. If you can now, if you can communicate with small groups, you can run an event. Because of this, you actually have to understand how to think of communication in itself as an object. 
communication in itself as something that is receiver based. Now I think one thing we run into in communities is communication problems. If that's not true, I don't think you've been involved in a community. That being said, what you need to have when you're understanding is the understanding that when you say something, the person you're talking to might not understand what you're saying at all completely. Whether that be cultural differences, maybe there was interruption, whatever it be, make sure that you understand that the message you're trying to get across needs to be gotten across to them. Think of communication, therefore, as an object. So as I'm discussing this right now, the object, my voice, is being sent out to you. Therefore, you interpreted it, and what you interpret is the communication. I might say something, I might advertise my event, I might advertise my software, but unless the thing that I am advertising actually comes out, and you understand what I'm trying to say, therefore the message is not being getting across. That's why in order to actually understand community, you have to understand several theories which relate to small groups. One of them is systems theory. If you've never understood systems theory, I recommend looking it up. It's very interesting. I've been doing some research on it in the past couple months. Now, system theory is a social science theory which says that people in groups operate as part of a machine. Now, I think this works good with your entire community to understand that every single member of the community is like a piece of the machine. Every single member represents a cog, represents a gear, all working hard to make the machine run. You have every single person putting input into the machine, and together, the people as a whole, your community, output something, which therefore is the product that your community produces. And therefore, the problem is you need to find out how the machine works to join the community or find out how the machine works to allow others to get into your community. Because as a community, you need to figure out that people who want to join your community have to join a part of your system. One of the problems with this is it can create something called groupthink, however. Now, if you've never heard of groupthink, I recommend strongly looking that up. Groupthink essentially means that together in a group, Eventually, even though everybody comes to the group that has different ideas, their minds will eventually start to output the same thought process. Whether that be that they are influenced by someone of a stronger opinion, whether it be that they are influenced by someone who may be of higher power than them, they therefore will all, the term is similar as hive mind, if you've never heard of that. Google any of these terms, it's beautiful. Another one that I like to look up and talk about is rules theory. What's that, that in order for you to have something you can consider a group or a community, members of the group have to have a common set of rules. People often refer to these, however, as norms. These rules dictate the way the group functions, if you will. And now, in order for these groups to dictate, in order for it to dictate group functions, that implies that when people come in who don't know the set of norms, they are not able to function into the group as well. Which is why it's important that as you get people new as you get newcomers coming into your community, you allow them to see the norms, you allow them to see what goes on. I mean, how often have you guys been at a job before where someone new starts up and people may not like him, people may not like her, people may not enjoy the person that they are? And so they make it harder for them to get into the community. They make it harder for them to join up with the people. This is how rules theory applies in our modern communities to where we need to have the set of norms to allow us to join in. Now what I think is important is that in order for you to be a part of this, you have to love your software that you're producing. If you don't love the software that you're producing, you're not actually going to have a viable piece of product that you can actually put out. 
if you don't actually feel enthusiastic when you get up in the morning, the product that you're not going to put out as is going to be as good. All right, does anyone have any questions about any of this? Go for it. Yeah. Getting, well, I think feedback for any community is best done by surveys. If that's what you're, best way to get feedback, you're saying? Mm -hmm. well, I think I, I, I personally would do a survey myself. I think it's important when you do a survey, though, to understand that the questions you ask are the most important. Because typically someone will design a survey and they'll ask questions which have a bias or they have a or they actually have two questions inside of that question as well it's important to be able to when you're trying to get opinions from your community you don't just ask your core community members you ask everybody because you have to get a wide range of audience because if all you do is create a survey to say this has the basic question saying do you feel like you enjoy contributing to the community and all you do is you ask the people who contribute to the community constantly because those are the people you're on a daily basis with, you're going to get feedback that says, my community's functioning, my community's great, everything I'm doing works. Mm -hmm. I recommend Qualtrics for surveys, personally, but I think that costs money. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else have anything? Go for it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's, I'm happy to spend more time with that. I think when it comes to dealing with difficult people like that, what you need to do, first, I, you need to sit them down and you need to tell them what they're doing is wrong because sometimes they don't even know. Mm -hmm. However, I'm not opposed to having someone not be allowed in the community necessarily. Mm -hmm. Certainly, I think there's people like that. And sometimes, just like everything else in life, you have to evaluate the pros and cons. Like, you have to look at yourself and say, OK, is it worth it for me to have this person in my organization if the work they're putting out is good enough? Because if you can deal with them being the asshole that they are for the work they're putting out, then that's a tough situation. It's only you can answer yourself. Mm -hmm. In order to have community, you have to have culture. And unless you have a culture, the community is just not community, but a set of individualized users doing similar things. And so one thing that people say you have an asshole, you have a problematic person, is when what they're doing doesn't confide by the set of culture that you have. And I think sometimes there's nothing we can do to stop it, I think, from occurring once or twice. But I think you can't let it go on because Ultimately, they detract from other people joining your community. And that can cause your software to fail, ultimately. 
Mm -hmm. Does that, what, is there anything else you can answer for that? Or? Well, I think there's some open source communities that their culture is asshole. Exactly. And I personally am not a part of them, but to each their own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Again, it depends very much on your uh, culture and it's your fault to make. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with that, everything. I didn't say it, you did. Exclusive versus inclusive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like Well, I think the new, uh, the model of open source inclusion is a relatively new idea, be it five, six years old. Yeah. I would, well, it's more widespread now, I guess, maybe is what I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes people don't know what they're doing necessarily. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they have to try, they're still doing try, but because the people who are in charge of sort of the center uh, membership mm -hmm. don't recognize their skills or viewpoints, I think almost any open source project ever has to be cross site for usability. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a usability issue, and again, you want to introduce it, you have three design stuff buttons, you talk about our workflow, all of those things are useful contributions that can be shown from now. Well, I think open source spends too much time with code. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that is what it is, necessarily. I don't Sometimes that involves including more people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm I mean, for instance, 90% of open source conferences are basically computer programming conferences in many ways. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. In project of, of communicating with assholes mm -hmm. or aggressive dogs yes. in, in general, uh, I would like to recommend to introduce uh, some person uh, on YouTube and there is one that came up uh, from Marshall Rosenberg. Hmm. He's talking about nonviolent communication uh, and he, he has a principle where he says, nobody says you're an asshole. 
I will have a problem or I will help. Mm -hmm. And then the artist will find that the problem may have been interpreted in some way. And, and it's just like a little bit, there's some technique to apply here. He's talking about that kind of communication. There are some and there are communications the guy who knows how to judge things. This is the method. And he also has some techniques to talk, not non violently. I think that in online communities, though, typically you have the issue, though, to where sometimes people, because they don't see the person face to face, they can be rude to them because they don't actually see the person's emotions as well. Mm -hmm. Which can be a problem. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else? Yeah. What's up? Yeah. Uh, the There's several. When I want to get someone to attend the event, what I like to do is I like to look and see what type of market I'm actually looking for. Because I feel like too often people will only market to people in the typical avenues that they're used to advertising and marketing for their event. So, for instance, you might want to think to places that you might not actually have ever thought of before. So that's when I started advertising on Reddit, for instance. So like for some for like I advertise on Google Plus for my events and I don't use that, I advertise on Facebook. Also I think so I started say for instance for some of my distros events finding other computer users groups in the area and advertising at those. Because not everyone might be an Ubuntu user, but they might think, oh, Linux, that's interesting. I'll show up. And so a good third of the people who show up to my events are not affiliated with Ubuntu in any way, but they're just wanting to come and talk about things related to open source, which is perfectly fine with me. And I think that diversifies the amount of people that can come, as well as what I like is it allows me to get feedback about Ubuntu from people who are not diehard core contributors who are, are fanboys, if you will. Um, are you... You want to know like other places you can market as well? Local libraries. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Meetup. Meetup. Um, what is Meetup like? What is it? Fifty dollars, I think, or something like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I definitely recommend Meetup if you can do that. Um, it depends on the size of your group that you're, it, what it is. Yeah. But if you want to grow your 10 people, though, I mean, definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, you have to evaluate your target audience that you're trying to get to. However, sometimes I feel like people set up an event that they like, and they don't set up an event, and they don't set up a community as well that the people who want to be a part of the community would like. And so I think sometimes you have to look and you have to say, well, why are they not attending? And then figure out what they want. And then you figure out what they want, you have to do that. You might not necessarily even enjoy some of the things that are going on, but if it's what the people in the community enjoy, then sometimes you have to be a part of that. And so I think sometimes maybe that's where the survey comes in. Maybe that's where just asking people, what's going on? What can we do better?
Sometimes I always like to break up the, the things into um, the makers and the doers. And so like, we'll have someone talk about, say, the, the, you'll have someone do, OK, this is the programming that I'm making. And then you'll have someone say, well, this is what I'm doing with the software. And so then the programmer might think, I didn't even know I could do that, mm -hmm, for instance. or Because you want to find a way to be able to market to every single category of people that you can, even if you're not part of that category. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think, like, I've attended a lug before that ha maybe two thirds of the lug was just going out and hanging out and gathering. Like, I attended a lug the other day down in, I was in Mexico, and the first hour is a, a or guy giving a conversation similar to what I'm doing right now. But then after that, we go out for dinner for two and a half hours and just talk and become friends. Which in a way is good because that without the social aspect, you can't have the group cohesion that you're looking for to be able to feel the connectedness. Mm -hmm. Are you trying to attract new developers or new people in general? Both. both? I think you're going to have to find a way to advertise differently to both of them. I think that you have to understand what they want as an individual. Oftentimes, so like with Ubuntu, I have, I'll advertise my meetups to average people, if you will, people who probably are not attending FOSDEM right now, as come and I'll fix your computer which gets them out to the event, gets them in connected with people. Um, what exactly is your software that you're, did you say? Distribution. Distribution, okay. So, if you're trying, I mean, have you tried, I mean, is there, is there an online community that you're part of, or? Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the, if you're looking for non-technical people, Facebook is not a bad option. Most non-technical people are on Facebook, and you can do Facebook groups, I think. And then every time anyone posts in there, they get notified, and they can go onto that page. If you're looking for very technical people, probably IRC is good. Twitter is a good blend as well to mix non-technical and technical people as well. Mm -hmm. um, for no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For for physical events, I think it's um, you have to adapt that for the culture and the environment that you're in for each person and each place. However, I mean, find me after this and we can figure something out for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, cool. I think that's it. Uh, yeah, shameless plug in three weeks. If you guys want to come out to California, we're hosting the uh, Southern California Linux Expo. It's a 3,000 person Linux event. It's the, I think the 19th through the 22nd. It's obviously not as good as FOSDEM, of course, but it's a close second. And I encourage you to come out sometime as well. But that being said, thanks for coming. <laughs>